uh, take a look at how man and God cooperate in sanctification, how the two work together. First of all, God's role in sanctification. God the Father, well, let's look at Hebrews 12, 5 through 11. And you have, uh, and you have forgotten that the word of encouragement that addresses you as sons, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone uh, he accepts as a son. The father disciplines his children. So that's a part of sanctification, right? Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. This shows something of the way in which God sanctifies us, both by causing us to want his will and desire to be more like Jesus, and then by giving us the power to actually do this. Okay, now let's look at number two, God the Son and his role in this. 1 Corinthians 1.30, but, uh, but by his doing you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Paul could write this uh, because of the fact that Jesus Christ earned sanctification for us. That's the instantaneous part, the already part that I keep talking about. Hebrews 12, 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he has set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus Christ is our example. He did it for us. 1 Peter uh, 2.21 for you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps. The third thing, uh, God the Holy Spirit. It is specifically God the Holy Spirit who works within us to change us and sanctify us, giving us greater holiness uh, of life. Uh, Peter 1 and 2. 1, 2. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, see that? By the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood, may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Galatians 5.22 is one of my favorite passages. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, fruit, uh, faithful, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such thing there is no law. The Holy Spirit produces these in our lives. Folks, think about this. What does it mean uh, to be sanctified, to become more like Jesus? I'll tell you what it means. It means to see the fruit of the Spirit grow and be more evident in your life. The fruit of the Spirit is, is who Jesus is, right? It's He's love, He's joy, He's peace, He's patience. And what we want to see is as we remain in Him, right? If we plant our tree by the water, the Holy Spirit right, uh, plenishes us and nourishes us, and we stay there. That's our choice is to stay planted by the water. Um, and, then, and then what happens is the fruit begins to grow in our lives. That's a perfect analogy. And the, this fruit that we want to see grow in our lives is the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 16, 18 says this. So I say then, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And the Spirit, um, what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not know, uh, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. See, if we live by, uh, are led by the Holy Spirit, right? We will become more and more responsive to the desires and promptings of the Spirit in our life and character. This is huge. Uh, Romans eight fourteen. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. We are sons, right? Yeah. And B, finally, our role in sanctification. As believers, we can often become frustrated with our growth process, and that's true. Um, we need not be, right? The two natures of the Christian are very critical here. Romans 6.13 Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Romans 12.1 Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Romans 8, 13. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you'll live. And then finally, Philippians 2, uh, 12 through 13. Therefore, my dear friends, 
as you have always obeyed not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. There are many aspects to this active role that we are to play in sanctification, and there's a whole list of scriptures in your notes for you to look at and hopefully look up. Let's take a look now on how sanctification affects the whole person. A. Intellect. Right? Colossians 3.10. And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge and the image of its creator. Romans 12.2. 12, 12, 12, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that God's will is, what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Uh, 2 2 Corinthians um, 10.5 We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. A lot of people uh, worry about uh, this idea of strongholds, and we hear about strongholds in the Bible. And yet, while they can be demonic, when you really study Paul and what was going on there, the strongholds he was talking about were wrong ways of thinking. Those were the strongholds. People had wrong ways of thinking about God and his grace and how it worked. And uh, those strongholds had to be torn down. Um, we had to tear those strongholds down and make them captive um, to Christ and, 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 and let God's way um, have its way. B, emotions. Galatians 5.22, but for the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Right? Emotions drive a lot of this fruit. We need to bring it under self-control under God and to see it grow and become more evident in our lives. Um, 1 Peter 2.11 Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Ephesians 4.31 Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. And so we need to to get our emotions under check and not be out of control. C, will, our will. Ephesians 4.31 again. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. D, our spirit. 2 Corinthians 7.1. Since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Also, our physical bodies. Now, who likes to talk about this? <laughs> Only skinny people, right? But it's true. Our physical bodies as well, right? 1 Thessalonians 5.23 May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 9.27 no, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Romans 6.12 Therefore do not let any sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. And then finally, 1 Corinthians 6.19-20 Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Pretty cool stuff, right? And so we've learned in this session, right, this idea of sanctification, becoming more like Jesus. We've learned exactly what that looks like, seeing an increase in the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And we've learned that there's this tension between the already and the not yet. We know that, yes, immediately upon salvation, we are washed clean and we are positionally perfect before God. It's good stuff, guys. And then we learned that there's this process of life that we go through, that it's messy, and it, and it, and it, it works us through, right? Um, it's a progressive thing. Um, and then we also know that at the end, um, we will be made perfect. God has a part in sanctification. We have a part in sanctification. That's a true uh, partnership um, for us to become more like Christ.